In pediatric patients, bladder catheterization is most commonly performed to obtain sterile urine for diagnosis of urinary tract infection in children who are unable to void on request. Bladder catheterization is also performed to obtain urine for diagnosis of other conditions, for monitoring fluid status, and for therapeutic intervention. This video will demonstrate in and out catheterization in the female child. Equipment required for bladder catheterization is available in prepackaged kits. Alternatively, your facility may prepare its own kits. Appropriate catheter size for a neonate is 5 or 8 French, for an infant or toddler, 8 French, for a child, 10 French, and for an adolescent, 12 or 14 French. For neonates and infants, a 5 or 8 French feeding tube can be used instead of a 5 or 8 French catheter. You will also need water-soluble bacteriostatic lubricant, povidone iodine swabs, sterile drapes, one non-fenestrated and one fenestrated, a sterile specimen collection tube or cup, a specimen label, and sterile gloves. Latex-free gloves are preferred. Cotton balls soaked in either povidone iodine solution, sterile soap and water or normal saline handled with forceps may be used instead of povidone iodine swabs depending on local practice. If using povidone iodine, have a warm, wet washcloth or water-soaked cotton balls or sponges available to remove residual povidone iodine after the procedure is complete. If collecting urine in a tube, consider having a sterile cup available to catch urine in case your patient voids after the area is cleansed but before the catheter is inserted. Additional sterile tubes or cups may also be required to divide the specimen for analysis and culture. You may also want to consider having an extra set of sterile gloves and catheter available in case sterility is breached during catheter insertion. Open all of the supplies and position them within easy reach. For neonates, infants, and young children, Encourage one caregiver to stay with the child during the procedure to provide comfort. Older children and adolescents should be given the option of having the parent present or having them leave the room. If the caregiver will not be present, it is recommended that the clinician performing any procedure involving the genitalia have another healthcare provider in attendance. Having toddlers and young children hold their caregiver's hand or a stuffed animal may be comforting for them. Distraction techniques may also be effective. The patient should be lying supine on the bed with the genitalia exposed in the frog leg position. The diaper or underwear should be removed from the field. Before beginning the procedure, the area may need to be cleaned with a wet washcloth to remove skin products and or stool. An appropriately trained clinical assistant should hold the knees of neonates, infants, and toddlers. The assistant can simultaneously restrain the arms and torso of neonates and infants by leaning their body over them. If performing multiple procedures, bladder catheterization should be performed first, particularly in a neonate or infant, since they may void during other procedures. Put on the gloves using sterile technique. Insert and leave the end of the catheter in the packet of lubricant and place it back on the sterile field. Place the non-fenestrated sterile drape under the buttocks and the fenestrated drape over the perineum, leaving the urethra exposed. Place the thumb and forefinger of your non-dominant hand on the superior aspect of the labia. Separate the labia to expose the urethral meatus by applying lateral outward and upward traction on the labia. Pulling down on the superior aspect of the vagina with a swab may help expose the urethral meatus. Beginning at the urethra and proceeding anteriorly to posteriorly, cleanse the urethral meatus and perivaginal area with povidone iodine, or, depending on local practice, sterile soap and water or normal saline. If using povidone iodine, 
cleanse three times, and allow the skin to dry. For best control and to avoid contamination, you should hold the catheter 20 centimeters proximal from the end. If the catheter is too long, you can loop the distal end so that it is easier to hold. Using your dominant hand, insert the catheter just until urine is obtained. If urine is not obtained, consider the possibility that the catheter is in the vagina. The female urethra is short and generally easy to catheterize once the orifice is visualized. However, the opening is very close to the vaginal opening and vaginal introitus mucosa may initially cover the urethral meatus. When applying gentle downward pressure on the cephalad aspect of the vaginal introitus, it may be easier to visualize the urethral orifice anteriorly. Leave the catheter in place as a marker and reattempt bladder catheterization with a new catheter. Collect urine in the specimen container. If collecting urine for urinalysis and or culture, consider discarding the first few drops of urine as this will decrease the false positive rate of these studies. This is often not done for neonates and infants given concerns about obtaining adequate sample volume. If the volume spontaneously returned in the tube is insufficient, massage the lower abdomen in the caudad direction to obtain residual urine from the bladder. Remove the catheter by pulling out gently. Remove all remaining povidone iodine. Divide the sample, if necessary, for point-of-care testing, laboratory urinalysis, and or culture. Label specimen containers immediately with patient and test information, date, and time. Send to the lab immediately to minimize lysis of white blood cells and growth of contaminating bacteria.